Hey there, my name is Eric, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the option Greek Delta and how you can use it in your option trading. You know, I use Delta a lot to help me choose strike prices, especially when I'm looking at credit spreads, debit spread, those types of trades. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe, like, and share this video on your favorite social me media platform. That'd be super helpful. And as usual, be sure to check the description of the video for additional option trading resources. So let's start with a quick overview of Delta uh, to help you kind of better understand how you can use it in your option trading. So let's go through a, a few bullet points here and then we're going to dive into the trading platform. So first of all, uh, what Delta is, is basically the dollar value, the price of an option changes when the underlying stock or ETF changes. So by a dollar. So if, a, if the stock goes up a dollar, um, the delta is going to tell you how much that option is going to increase or decrease depending on if it's, if it's a call or put. So call options, real quick, always have a positive delta, which is why they are bullish. So if the stock goes up a dollar, the call option has a positive delta, which means it will go up also um, accordingly. Put options always have a negative delta. This is why it's bearish. Um, if the stock goes up, put options will go down because they're negative, which is why when you buy a put option, uh, uh, you know, a straight put, you would want the stock to go down because the delta is negative and then you would increase in value on that one. So um, for any given strike, the sum of the absolute values of the put and call of the delta is one. And we're going to take a look at that in a minute in the platform. So we'll come back to that one. Um, and this is probably one of the most important things or, or one of the things that I use the most is this line item. Delta can be used as a proxy for the probability that an option will expire in the money. So if an option has a delta of 50, which is kind of at the money, there's about a 50% chance it expires in the money. Um, this is why people sell out of the money options uh, because out of the money options would have a low delta, which means there's a very uh, less likely probability that they expire in the money. And we'll, again, we'll kind of re retouch on these once we get into the platform. Um, I will say that Delta as a probability is not perfect, but it's pretty close and we'll look at that as well. And as usual, check the description of this video on how to use Delta as a probability to trade SPX. I got another video um, and a PDF uh, download if you want to just kind of see the strategy where Delta is kind of the primary driver of, of choosing the uh, strike prices. Okay, so let's dive into the Thinkorswim trading platform and let's go through some of those items again so you can kind of see it and maybe uh, it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, so first of all, you can see that uh, I have the SPX up here and I'm looking at just the, the first monthlies up here. And I have two main columns on both sides. This is the Delta column and this is the probability of ITM or in the money. And I have the same kind of on this side for the, for the put side. And so the first thing I kind of just want to look at is um, you know, the for a call option, which is over here on the left, the calls, the delta is always positive and it's somewhere between zero and one. And if we go out, um, I'm not going to go all the way out, but you can see that as you get farther in the money, the delta increases. As, as you get farther out of the money, the delta decreases. And kind of the opposite is true for the puts. The value of a put delta is always negative. So again, if SPX were to rally by a dollar, this particular option would lose about $27, right? Because it's a negative delta, it sort of goes opposite of the underlying. So again, negative delta means you are basically bearish. If, if you have a negative delta, you want your stock or whatever to go down um, to a certain degree. So, um, so again, uh, call option delta is always positive, put option delta is always negative. And when you add these two numbers up together, it should equal about one. Now it's not perfect. This is where it starts to get, you know, a little bit imperfect in the in the real world. But let's just start at the kind of at the money. SPX as of this video is trading at 2468, which is kind of right here between 2465, 2470. And if we see this delta, um, the 2470 has a delta of 50. And then this delta uh, is also 50. So again, when you add these two numbers up together, they should equal about one. OK, and then, you know, once you get like really starting to be, you know, farther away from the money, whether it's in or out, you can see if we go down here, this Delta 76 plus a Delta 27 doesn't exactly add up to one. Uh, it's actually a little bit more than one. And if we go up to the higher um, 
uh, delta, or at least the higher strikes here. The delta here is 18, and you can see that 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 would total kind of less than one. So as you get sort of farther away from the money, the delta, um, that delta adding up to one starts to get skewed by a couple points. So just kind of want to point that out. And with that, you know, with that said, it's also important to understand that when we start looking at this as a probability, the probabilities start to be a little bit different from deltas too, uh, as well. So if we look at the probability in the money column, we can see that the delta 50 here, that this particular option has a 49% chance of expiring in the money. So even though it's not exactly 50, delta is still a pretty good proxy of expiring in the money. As we go farther in the money here, you know, with 53% chance, 58%, you can see that again, delta is, it's not perfect. Um, but, you know, if you want to narrow your, what you're looking at and when you're trying to make a trade, it's still, you know, for me, I basically look at Delta and if I saw, uh, let's say I wanted to sell a credit spread and out of the money call spread with a 30% chance of staying out of the money, I would look at a Delta 30 something or Delta 28 or Delta 33 because they're around 30% probability of expiring in the money. That means there's a 70% chance of expiring out of the money, which is what you would want with a credit spread. Now, if you trade uh, in the money call spreads and things like I do on the SPX, um, that's in that, that link in the video, then you know, I would want them to be in the money at expiration. And so I might do a Delta 70 up here, which would mean there's a 70% chance that expires in the money. So that is just um, a few ways you can use Delta to help you, you know, choose your strikes. If you're doing uh, credit spreads, you can look at out of the money deltas um, and kind of understand what your probabilities are without getting too far into uh, you know whatever particular platform you use. So I hope you found that helpful. Again, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you at the next video.